Hi guys, how are we doing? Um, welcome to another episode of the Still Early Podcast. We have Eric Pajowski <laughs> here today. Um, where are you, you're, you're coming to us from Utah, Eric, is it? Yeah, thanks for having me, Jack. I am right now located in Utah, Salt Lake City, but I'll probably be bouncing out, bouncing all over the place over the next year or two. Uh, the remote work just lets you work from wherever, so I, I love it. It's incredible. I, like I'm the same, I'd be bouncing to a lot of different countries here in Europe. And um, yeah, it's just the office days are kind of over, you know, it's just brilliant. But um, so over. Yeah. So look, you're a co- you just launched a new Bitcoin company. You've worked for Bitcoin Magazine. Um, it's your, your company's Bitcoin talent company, all folks around Bitcoin recruitment. Do you want to just give us uh, a quick intro of your background in Bitcoin and then kind of how Bitcoin talent, talent company came to be um, and the problem it's solving? Yeah, I guess I'll start with my personal story and that kind of leads into Bitcoin Talent Co. So for me, uh, actually today is my 27th birthday. So rewind, uh, I guess, the last six or so years um, more. Actually, back. let's take it back to 2017. I was still in college, Penn State University, and there was a blockchain club. And during that time too, that's when the price of Bitcoin was running up more. So you saw some headlines about it on the news or whatever. And so I just got curious and I was like, okay, let me go to this club. Let me see what it's all about. You know, I get there, they're, they're shilling Ethereum and trying to explain what a blockchain is. And my head's just spinning. I have no idea. I was like, okay, I'll buy some. So bought some back in 2017, uh, went down the whole shitcoin trading route, then got wrecked in 2018 when everything just collapsed. And I was like, oh man, I'm ne- never going back to this stuff. Uh, but yeah, so after 2018, um, about a year after that or so, I picked up the Bitcoin standard and just got some more curious about Bitcoin. Like, what is this thing? Why is it still around? And then from there, um, continued learning. And I'd say around 2019, 2020, I was getting the itch. I was like, this this thing's real. It's, it's an invention kind of like analogous to, I guess, fire, the internet. I was like, I can't let, I can't pass this up. So I was working as an engineer after school and I was just so sick and tired of it. Like working in, in like a dreary office, you know, everything's gray. Uh, you're not allowed to like get up and talk to people. Um, the work was just so boring. I was like, all right, this is, there's so much more to life than that. So um, I decided to go on a Bitcoin really. And that's when I started Bitcoin EDU. And what that was just a way, it was an education company, just a way to educate, I guess, both other people and myself. Like I was still on a learning journey too. This is a couple of years ago. Uh, so yeah, I was I was holding cohorts. I was doing uh, online passive courses, providing resources to people, really just trying to get my, plant my uh, foundation in the Bitcoin space. And right around that time too, I started networking. So talking to plebs on Twitter and, you know, going to local meetups, I uh, held a couple seminars in my, by myself too, just like educating people about Bitcoin. And I guess that transitioned more into a uh, Bitcoin magazine. So landed a role at Bitcoin magazine. I was there from 2021 until very recently. And I saw what it was like working with other Bitcoiners, uh, working in Bitcoin. And it was just like the most passionate feeling I ever had in my life. So I was like, okay, this is definitely where I need to be. Um, and then fast forward now to Bitcoin Talico. So a couple months ago, I started really like paying attention to Twitter. So I don't know if you know this, but like 95% of people online don't really post anything. If they are, you know, they're just posting about personal stuff here and there. There's real, there's no real uh, direction towards posting. So I was like, okay, so there's tough, there's like 5% of people that actually take it serious. And now it's becoming like a way to like either network or, you know, get leads for a business, whatever it may be. Twitter and other social media is becoming very powerful. So I noticed that trend started posting more and more, um, built up my Twitter following. And that's when one of my co-founders, Andy, cold reached out to me and he said, Hey, I see you posting about Bitcoin and, and jobs. I have this idea for like a recruiting firm and it's Bitcoin focused. And so we just started talking more and more about it. And I'd say this past December, 2022, we started reaching out to companies and said, do you need any help with, the, with hiring? And we actually got really, really good traction. Was, we're like, okay, we're onto something here. Uh, fast forward now, it's February 20th. So a couple months later, uh, yeah, we have a couple clients in the books. We have uh, so many 
uh, Bitcoiners looking for jobs in our talent pool. And yeah, it's taken off. So I'm really happy to uh, finally bring this company out into the real world and bring all this talent into Bitcoin. Let's let's grow this network. Yeah, amazing. Love the energy. It's kind of you have you have you've carried along the kind of Bitcoin magazine energy that you <laughs> that you hear in the spaces and stuff to, to your own company. Yeah. Uh, but um, and how did you so? Like you said that you left, so you work an engineering job originally. Is that what you said? Yeah. So how, like, how did you bust out of the rat race? Like you more or less just started and then straight away <laughs> you're like, yeah. you left it. I have a lot to say about that actually. So in school I studied energy engineering and uh, post, post school, I got a job as a civil engineer designing natural gas pipelines. And like I said before, I just, it just wasn't my thing, but I needed a paycheck. So I did it for a couple of years within like the first year or so coming up to my second year, I was getting ready to get my like first real raise, you know, my first real promotion going from like a design engineer to a senior design engineer. So I was looking forward to it and everything. And then I started thinking about it and I was like, huh, I'm going to get probably 10% raise or so. And I see inflation's running at, I don't know, at the time, a couple percent or more. And then I start digging into inflation more. And I was like, oh, so the CPI that's reported by the government isn't actually like an accurate number per se. Obviously, inflation is uh, more of a basket and it's different per person. But I was like, if I get a 10% raise every two years and follow this track of being an engineer my whole life, okay, I'll get, I'll probably top out at a, 150k or so after 20 years as an engineer experience and all that and i'm not really going to get ahead in life and so yeah just realizing that um getting good and then i got the promotion got that 10 percent or whatever and i was like I, I can't keep going down this path i'll just never get ahead so that's when it really clicked for me um and i was like i need to i need to one make more money and two, I need to work in Bitcoin because I guess at the same time, while I was working this engineering job, I'm checking the Bitcoin price every day. I'm on Bitcoin Twitter. I, you know, I'm, I'm researching things on myself, learning about it. And yeah, so from there, I was just like, all right, I need to make a drastic move. And that's what I did. I was like, I need a career change. I switched from uh, engineering over to business. I did sales and accounts at Bitcoin Magazine. And now I'm just taking that, that experience over to this new thing, Bitcoin Talent Co. Yeah, that's really interesting. And it, like, do you think it was the, was it Bitcoin? Like, was it say, like, did you read any books that triggered this line of thinking? I presume Bitcoin influenced you, like just being exposed to the, that kind of, you know, Bitcoin circles and stuff. I presume right. you didn't, didn't come about it totally on your own accord. Oh, no, n none of it was really me. Um, besides initially <laughs> going to that blockchain club and, you know, buying some here and there. No, it was really more the community. Um, spending more time on Twitter, to be honest, like 2019, 2020, and then re read some initial books. Like I pointed out before, the Bitcoin standard really stuck out to me. That got the wheels turning in my brain. And then I would say 2020, when the whole COVID stuff happened, um, that really got me thinking, okay, there's something wrong with our system. I need to search this some, research this some more. What's going on? What is money in general? Why is this happening? Why do we go through boom and bust cycles? I even thought about starting a bank at one point. I was like, what? Why can't I start a bank and just make my own money? Uh, yeah, so that just got me down this path. And you know how the rabbit hole works. It's once you're, once you start going down it, you just keep going down further and further as time goes on. Yeah. And do you think, just before we move on, but do you think, um, do you think the rabbit hole plateau, like, do you still find yourself, you know, years later still listening to, huge amounts of podcasts each week and reading books or does it reach a plateau and then you're kind of done? hundred percent. I would say it depends on the person, obviously, but for me, um, I've been exploring more Bitcoin adjacent topics. So one of them being, you know, pri internet privacy. How do I one make my Bitcoin transactions more private, more secure? How do I make like using a VPN? How do I make my internet connection more private? Everything I'm doing online, how can I, work towards ways to keeping my my uh, online identity a little more private, even though I know I am a pub, more of a public out, outwardly facing person online, there's still some aspects that um, I like to try to keep private. So there's that. Uh, another thing too is the the beef rabbit hole, thinking about where to get your meat. 
Um, so more recently, there is a, I'm in Salt Lake City. There is a Bitcoin meetup merged with a bunch of local farmers. And it was like the best thing ever for me. So I'm learning about like regenerative agriculture, decentralization in that aspect, um, not buying your food at grocery stores. And then how do you relate that to Bitcoin? So yeah, those are just two examples of Bitcoin adjacent topics that when you start thinking outside the box, outside of Bitcoin and into these topics, uh, it gets your brain going and you start thinking, how, how is Bitcoin influencing every other aspect of my life? I know it's crazy. I'm actually having a Texas Slim on the podcast next week, so that should be oh a, great. That should be a fun one. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been wanting to meet him someday. Yeah, he's actually like traveling the world at the moment. I think he's on like a kind of beef initiative tour. And to be honest, I don't actually know a whole lot. Like I know I, I listened to him on Pomp when he was on it. I know a decent bit about it, but I'm not super up on the whole thing. So like I'm really looking forward to hearing all about it. Yeah, but um. Cool. So I suppose with Bitcoin, with like the Bitcoin talent company, for people listening, there's lots of people out there. They want to get jobs in Bitcoin. Like now is the perfect time to be building. We're at the depths of the bear market. Everyone that's kind of not a real believer has surely been washed out at this stage. Um, if someone wants to get a job in Bitcoin, how should they go about getting a job in Bitcoin? Sure. I guess the first thing I would say is make sure you get you have like a baseline knowledge of Bitcoin, be able to transact with it. Know what the Lightning Network is. Um, you don't need to know how to like program or anything, but let's just just get your one on one stuff out of the way. After that's out of the way, um, realize there's a difference between Bitcoin and crypto, because if you try to apply to a Bitcoin company and you start talking about blockchain technology and your favorite crypto token aside from Bitcoin, there's a good chance that you're not going to get much further in the interview process too. So there is definitely a distinction between Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrencies out there. And the sooner you can explain it to yourself why there is a difference, um, I think at that point you'll be ready to start applying. So when you're ready to get, or let's just say you're, you're thinking about getting a Bitcoin job, I would say at this point, you want to start what's called a proof of work project. And for me, that was Bitcoin EDU. So that was... That was an education company, um, me just putting content out there in the public and getting feedback from other Bitcoiners, other people out there. Um, and you're really just demonstrating that you're doing something in the Bitcoin space. So for anyone listening, you know, you can start a podcast, you can start a blog, um, you can go around to other businesses in, in, your, uh, in your city and try to onboard them to Bitcoin and start taking a tally of it. Post about it online, post a picture of you and a restaurant owner and they start accepting Bitcoin. The, the community will pick up on that and we'll see you're doing stuff in the community. And then eventually, I would say after like six months or so of just doing that, you'll have opportunities coming to you. So instead of you having to go in and add your resume to another giant stack of other resumes and compete with other people, why not just have the opportunities come to you because you're putting yourself out there. So that's that would be like my piece of advice, that aspect. And then um, when you're ready to start applying, Build your network up too. So I would say look look at people like current employees and, and companies you want to work for. Just start DMing them on Twitter or wherever it may be, LinkedIn, and start spark up a conversation. Don't talk about the company specifically. Just say like, hey, uh, I noticed you're into Bitcoin and whatever else. Let's talk. And more often than not, the community usually gets back to you. And you just spark a conversation, be a normal person. And then from there, you can ask for a reference eventually. And then getting a reference will drastically increase your odds of getting a job, or at least an interview. So you want to get a reference from someone that hopefully works within the company. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's some other tips I can give, but uh, I'll stop there. Yeah, so just on getting a re like most employees actually want to give a reference as well, don't they? Because like they yeah. kind of get incentivized to... Yeah, most companies do give some kind of bonus, so like you know, 500 bucks, 1000 bucks, whatever it may be just for referring someone that gets hired. So yeah, current employees are incentivized to refer you. Yeah. So yeah, like the, now that you say it, like nearly everyone that I know that's gotten hired in and around Bitcoin, they've either done like, um, you know, some kind of content, podcast, Twitter. Um, is there anything else? Uh, yeah. Or like a Substack blog kind of thing. Yeah. So like I say, so I presume like, you know, that gives you an edge 
is there any other ways you can get an edge? Like, should you be trying to <laughs> show up at the office kind of with your resume in hand? Or, <laughs> yeah, or I think I tweeted about that recently. <laughs> Let's take a step back. What is everyone doing right now? They're going to the one of few Bitcoin job boards and they're applying and just crossing their fingers that hoping they'll get uh, an email back to set up an interview. So you're competing against the rest of the Bitcoin community and some other people outside the community for this one job. So you got to think, how do you separate yourself from the rest of the pack? You got to get creative with it. Um, one thing, like I said, is, is getting that reference. Um, let's see, another thing could be, hmm. Let's say you you do a whole project for, like, let's just say you really want to work for, let's say, Strike. Take on a project yourself. Do do see something they're trying to do, like remittances in um in a nat in a country they haven't been so far. Do a little project yourself. Do a little research project. I don't know, and, and just give it to them. Like, how do you how do you show that you're different from the rest of the pack? Um, and that's aside from let's let's make your resume as best as it can be, and you know that's that's all the normal stuff applying to work any type of job. But yeah, let's get creative. Let's think outside the box. How do you make yourself stand apart from the stack of resumes? Yeah. Um, yeah, like if, I suppose if you're applying for a sales job, you should be coming in with like leads or something. <laughs> yeah, come up with a plan saying, um, I already started this for you. <laughs> like I already started getting leads. I didn't say it was for this company specifically, but I have 100 leads for you uh, that I think would be valuable. Just provide value in any way you can. And I think that speaks to more of the Bitcoin ethos. Uh, it's the value exchange. So how can you provide value? And then in return, they'll give you value back, which is Bitcoin. Yeah, cool. So, so like regarding Bitcoin jobs at the moment, is there like what are Bitcoin companies looking for? Is this like do Bitcoin companies, I know it's going to be different in every company because yeah. it's probably not a blanket rule, but do they do they all want that kind of, you know, hardcore Bitcoiner knowledge? So say like, will the Bitcoiner knowledge stand to you more than having the exact skills to, for the job? Or is it kind of a 50, 50 or does it, yeah. Does the Bitcoiner knowledge not matter as much as you think it might or yeah. What's sure. the, what's the balance of it? Yeah. Like you said, I think every company is different. Um, I've spoken to companies that specifically want hardcore Bitcoiners, you know, that's someone that, uh, I would say can that has 201 type of knowledge um aside just from understanding you know basic how to how to send transaction or what is what is bitcoin step further from that i've also talked to companies that that are okay with just the 101 knowledge but they all want some they want to see some kind of understanding of of bitcoin itself and i'd say more of the ethos which i was speaking to before so bitcoiners i think are more like self-starters um they, they take self-responsibility, um, self-discipline, that kind of stuff serious. Uh, and they have a view of the world that aligns with Bitcoin too. So yeah, if you can, if you can show employers that you have a basic understanding, plus you're involved with the community and you understand the ethos of Bitcoin, that puts you so much ahead of anyone else. So that would be the, that would be the main thing if you're a Bitcoiner and then there's people outside the industry that may not even know they want to get in the industry yet. And we're, we're trying to get, let's just say the top execs at a, a Google or whatever tech company, how do we get them to come work in Bitcoin? And so that's where we come in and we're providing educational resources, uh, boot camps, all that kind of stuff. How do we get them up to speed to that 101, 201 education as quick as possible? Cause they're talented in there specific skill set, but they need to understand Bitcoin. So yeah, it's a blend of both. And how much that split is 50, 50, 60, 40 really depends on the company. And I think, um, studying the CEO, studying the, the leadership in the company, what's on their website, you'll, you'll be able to gauge what, how, like how much you need to know about Bitcoin and yeah. And if they connect with you guys, you'll, you'll tell them that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, so I just like say the jobs market in general is this, are uh, cause I, I know at the top of the, like the whole kind of crypto craze, which isn't exactly what you're doing, but, um, like Coinbase, I think I, like someone told me that applied for jo a job there, that Coinbase had like a thousand applications for the one yeah. role. Um, is it looking anything like that now or is it? much more kind of bled out companies are struggling to hire. 
Yeah, I think companies are definitely struggling to hire the right person. Um, there was a huge, during this last cycle, 2021, 20, 2022, when the Bitcoin price went up, uh, all these Bitcoin companies had more Bitcoin, or I guess more money, fiat dollars to pay their employees. So they hired like crazy and they went through rounds of layoffs too. I'm sure you're seeing that. And you're seeing that with big tech as well, or the regular uh, companies. You're seeing tons of layoff, layoffs right now. But I think what's special about Bitcoin and, and this industry is that it's still so new. So a lot of them are more startups and they're still hiring, I think, like crazy. Um, not not to the extent, you know, they were a year or two ago, but it's, it's definitely still there. And I can foresee in the next year or so, as the price goes back up, there's going to be so many Bitcoin jobs available. Yeah. Um, and what about like, say, it, like if you look at, you know, the jobs boards, um, like Bitcoin or jobs or any of the, mm -hmm. like, I'm not sure, is that the only Bitcoin focused one? Um, yeah, there's that. There's a, I saw a Stacker News has a, has a place on their website for jobs and industry. Um, we're actually working that as well. So it seems okay. like there's more and more popping up. And like, so, so say on those boards, a lot of you, a lot of the roles you see like are US based. Um, mm -hmm. Now, there's there's more bitcoiners than just uh in the usa <laughs> yeah. um should people you know do international people get hired for these u.s roles or yeah is are you wasting your time yeah it, like i said it really depends on the companies i've spoken to companies that specifically want u.s um candidates i've also spoken to companies that are kind of like yeah wherever as long as they can speak english doesn't really matter and they can be available during these time zones so they can have team meetings or whatever. Um, yeah, so I think it's less important, especially as, as a remote work is emerging and becoming the dominant way to work nowadays. Uh, companies kind of have to align with that. Um, they can't drag you into an office. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get discouraged if you're international. Uh, and I see more and more Bitcoin companies popping up in Europe and really bullish on Africa as well and some parts of Asia too. So I give it, this decade is going to be incredible for the growth of this industry. So I'd say give it some time, but I would not let that hold you back from applying. Because if you're that talented of a person and you can get the job done and more, they're going to hire you no matter your time zone. Yeah, that's a good point. And to be honest, I think like, yeah, if you're thinking of applying, like my biggest mistake was for you, you know, if you're someone that's just thinking about Bitcoin nonstop, um, you're coming home from your, you know, your feet job or whatever. Yeah. And like, you're just watching like, I don't know, whatever videos to X speed podcast after pocket book after book, just like mm -hmm. you, should, you should definitely spend the time just trying to get in the space. And you'd be surprised because like a lot of these companies, in fact, nearly all Bitcoin companies are still startups. Exactly. Um, so I'd imagine they'd be much more willing to, you know, it's not like you're going into a huge corporation where they like, they have all these predefined like qualifications that you need the, yep. the, the, the resume is more like, or the, not the resume, but the job requirements are probably more like just a guide. And then they're going to be quite open to whatever you can bring to the table. Do you think that's. Accurate? Yeah. So speaking anecdotally about my personal situation, I said, I, w I was working as an engineer and got into more in sales and account management. How did I do that? Uh, top of my resume, I, I said, how, I, it was a short paragraph saying, how much of a Bitcoiner I am. And I believe like, I want to, I want to help propel hyper Bitcoinization, which was the mission statement of Bitcoin magazine. Um, and then I said, I'm a self starter. You know, I do, I've started these companies on, on the side, like side projects. I've done this, this, and this. Um, and that's what got me my initial interview. So just a paragraph at the top of your resume quickly saying like who you are, why you want to work in Bitcoin and then list out, you know, your past work experience. So, thinking of someone that's reviewing your resume, the first thing you're going to see is that initial paragraph. And so if they see you're a Bitcoiner, okay, maybe I'll read more then. And then if they see your experience, your, um, your past roles or whatever, kind of align with the job, they might just choose you for an interview. And then from there, just get, get on a call, get on the interview and knock it out of the park. And what about like, if you're, now this might be a bit of a, an obtuse question maybe, but, um, does it matter like how your resume is structured applying for these kind of jobs? Cause I know like big corporations, they have like AI scanners and it's yeah. like, 
picking out people based on keywords. Does that matter at this kind of level or? Yeah. It does, yeah. I would say some companies are definitely leveraging that technology and that's becoming cheaper and cheaper for companies to, to utilize. And just speaking like about our systems internally, like, yeah, there's tons of software that I could quickly upload a resume and it scans really like very quick. Like what's this person's past experience, where'd they work, what years? Uh, yeah, so I would definitely pay attention to that and make sure it's formatted correctly. Make sure you don't have any spelling errors. I'm surprised at how many times I see just like formatting errors, spelling errors, that kind of stuff on resumes. Like you have one shot, you have about 10 seconds to convince a recruiter or a hiring manager at a Bitcoin company that you're worth uh, interviewing. So give yourself the best odds of getting that interview. And I'd say really make sure your resume is um, put together nicely. Have multiple people go over it, use templates. Um, there's services out there. We're going to be providing a lot of those resources too at Bitcoin Talent Co. Yeah, so you definitely kind of want to like even just SEO like your your resume or whatever. Your CV. I, yeah, that's a really good point. I, I haven't really thought about that too much. You definitely want to do that. <laughs> um, so like with you guys then, how if someone wants to... Yeah, someone wants to get a Bitcoin job, like what's the difference between going to just on the jobs board, um, like Bitcoin or jobs or any of like the maybe the more crypto boards as opposed to coming to you guys and applying like through you? Like what is the difference between just going straight to jobs board or working with Bitcoin talent company? Sure. So I would say we're more focused on the companies. So that doesn't mean we're ignoring you know all the potential Bitcoiners that could be getting jobs. So we're going to be providing resources to them for, and all that kind of stuff. So we have a talent pool and that's a general application. So they can come to us, any Bitcoin can come to us, submit their application, submit additional information. Um, and then we'll go through and, and parse it into like, okay, this is a sales type of person, a Bitcoiner that's a salesperson and we'll match you with any existing jobs. We'll consider for ones we're hiring for or ones in the future. So then let's just say next month we get, uh, the opportunity to hire for a salesperson at whatever Bitcoin company, we're going to be reviewing all the salespeople in our talent pool first. So I guess that's one place, uh, speaking from the candidate side that we help out and where we provide most of our value is actually the outbound, um, searches for, for companies. So I think the stat is like, there's candidates are like five times um, as likely to get hired if an outbound search compared to anything else. So what I'm doing in my, my day to day is I'm going on LinkedIn, I'm going on Twitter and I'm reaching out to people I think could be a good fit for a role we're hiring for. And I'm saying, Hey, you, you seem to fit these qualifications. Are you interested to work in Bitcoin? Um, and especially for these companies, this seem like a role you would want to, you'd want to do. And that's where, yeah, like I said, we provide most of our value there going out and finding that talent. So, what we really want to do is bring all the, the talent outside the industry into Bitcoin because yeah, the faster we can do that, the faster Bitcoin companies can grow and the whole ecosystem can just grow together. Yeah, so I presume the first port of, port of call would be that if say any of these companies like what Swan Bitcoin or whatever need to fill some role, they can't fill it. They come to you guys, you guys check your, your kind of internal talent pool of people that you've had signed yep. up. And then if it's not there, um, or there's not enough applications or whatever, then you go onto LinkedIn and you start doing your thing then. Exactly. And that's just traditional recruiting. So it's been proven very valuable in other industries. And we're kind of bringing that same service to uh, Bitcoin talent and Bitcoin industry. Um, and that, how but, hasn't this like, <laughs> how has no one thought of this in Bitcoin? Like, Oh man, <laughs> I'm still surprised by that. And my thought is, so there's ton, there's plenty of crypto um, recruiting firms. There's no Bitcoin only. And so like me being a Bitcoiner, my co-founder being Bitcoiners, uh, we were like, we need to provide the service for Bitcoin only to stay focused on the mission. Um, so yeah, we didn't see anyone else doing the market. We we're like, okay, well, we're going to fill this void and we're going to staff the next decade of plus of uh, Bitcoin companies with really hired or really talented people. Yeah, it's, and to be honest, it's one of the things, I'm a bit bummed I didn't think of it, <laughs> but um, it's, it's one of the things um, that, like, because Bitcoin only can be challenging from a revenue point of view, but like, I think what you guys are doing, like you you'd be leveraging the already successful Bitcoin companies. So like, you're just basically, 
you know, taken the massive recruitment burden off them. So, yeah. So one more thing I wanted to add too: um, companies that are get to like, let's just say 20 plus employees or more, that's when they start considering hiring a, an internal recruiter, HR person to fill those type of needs. The issue with that is um, you can grow too quickly. And I've seen that happen at a couple of different companies this, this past bull run. Um, so you hire an internal team of multiple recruiters for your one Bitcoin company and the market crashes and you either you can't keep paying those recruiter salaries or um, there's no work for them because you're, you have a hiring freeze. Right. So our ability is we can help ramp up or down. So if you need to go through a very, let's say a year long um, hiring spree, hiring 100 people or whatever, we can help with that. Um, but if you need to ramp back down, OK, and the next year after that, we only need to hire five, 10 people. Um, you can ramp down with us, too. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally get that because I'd imagine there's tons of recruiters sitting around <laughs> in the recent crash in Bitcoin companies who don't. Exactly. Yeah. Have a whole lot to do. Um, so, yeah. So, like, what's what's your guys' model then? Like, is, I suppose traditional recruitment is similar enough to that. But, like, does it, if someone wants to give their resume to you guys, like, and just be in the pool, does that cost anything or are the cost borne by the the company that wants to do recruitment? Yeah. For any Bitcoiners that want to apply to our talent pool, that's completely free. We're going to be providing free resources as well, you know, templates for resumes, that kind of idea. Um, but for our, our, I guess most of our revenue comes from companies. So traditional recruiting model, it's two different types of ways you can set this up. One is more for like a one-off role. Um, let's just say you need an executive level hire or an individual co contributor to fill a certain role. We can come in and fill that role um, and we take a fee on top of that. Or another, the other model we have is embedded. So that's when we take a more, um, I would say it's more of a flat fee per month, but we can be hiring for five, 10, 15 roles at a time. So mm -hmm. it's it depends on the company's needs and I just wanted to say too, the, the service is the same, whether you do the one-off roles or you do the more embedded model, service is still the same, but where it's just, the, it's the pricing that changes. Yeah, yeah, totally understand. So like, I suppose lots of it is if you're a Bitcoin or thinking of getting in the space, don't know where to start, just start talking to you guys and uh, put your, you know, what is it? Um, hat into the ring or whatever. I yeah, exactly. I, so what I would say is go to Bitcoin Talent Co. There's a button that just says, I want a Bitcoin job. Put your resume in there. That's the very first thing you do. Um, Cause we'll start, let's, like I said, we'll, we'll start looking there first for any of our current open roles or roles in the future. We'll reach out to you if we think you're a good fit. Um, and then the second thing is, yeah, follow us on Twitter, Bitcoin Talent Co. And visit our website periodically, because like I said, we're going to be rolling out all of these educational resources and all that kind of stuff too, that can help Bitcoiners, you know, um, go to the next level. Yeah, totally. Look as well, I think there's a kind of conception that maybe I'm off on this. I've never really said it, but like on Twitter or whatever, I think people think that like, there's a lot of Bitcoin companies out there and that like this thing's going to happen by itself. And like, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but first of all, I don't actually think there is a lot of Bitcoin comp or there there's Bitcoin companies that are up and coming, but we need more and more people working to build this reality. We all want, it's not just going to happen by itself. Yeah. Um, so like it, it, it's kind of to your point as well on Twitter, like there's 95% of people on Twitter. In fact, it might even be higher than that, but like they're just sitting on the sidelines kind of hyper Bitcoinization is going to come on and like, yeah, you know, you gotta, you gotta help out. Come on. I know it. you can buy and hold it. That's, that's great. You need to do some other stuff too. If you really want to see Bitcoin achieve success um, and beat out the fiat system, we need everyone that's remotely even um, thinking about Bitcoin even once per week to do something. Yeah. Cause I just know like there's just so many smart people that, and like, don't get me wrong. It's so good to just be involved in the kind of Bitcoin community and stuff. But like, if we could yeah. get those brains actually into the space, it's like, you're just stacking the deck like towards Bitcoin because I, I, I'm not of the, actually the opinion that Bitcoin is this done deal. Um, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a, a given. So we just need to do every because 
I think even if even if it is a given, it doesn't serve you to think it doesn't serve Bitcoin to think that way because you're leaving it open to chance then. So you should just right. kind of I don't know. We just need everyone on board. So yeah, go sign up for, for you guys and <laughs> so what I'm thinking about it from the perspective of uh, talent and jobs is getting those executive level hires um, from a very, very well known tech company. How do we get them into Bitcoin? Because then it'll start getting orange built and it's already happening. I'm doing this with current candidates we're interviewing. Uh, they're starting to follow me on Twitter, you know, starting to read more about Bitcoin, um, getting curious. You know what they're going to do? You, whether they come in this industry or not, they're going to get more orange pilled one and two, they're going to tell all their friends. So they're telling their people within the, their existing company or whatever it may be, all their friends and family about Bitcoin. And then this thing just keeps growing and growing. And the, the faster we can close that loop from kind of just ignoring Bitcoin or just saying, eh, it's, it's funny money, whatever, to starting to take it serious, getting people curious, that's when it really starts taking off. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I love what you guys do and think it's very important and sorely needed. So, look, just to change um, change gears a little bit, uh, sure. like, just just in, so aside from Bitcoin Talent Company, which which you guys are, you know, you're you're solving that problem. Like, what other problems do you think Bitcoin? Um, what other problems do you think needs to be solved in Bitcoin, if any, that are glaring and not being solved at the moment? Yeah, so I should mention another thing we're going to be tackling is um, advisory services. So I think a lot of leaders right now in Bitcoin companies, uh, they're mostly working for like they're starting startups and they don't have that existing knowledge. How do you build a company from zero couple of employees up to 100 plus employees? So we're trying to fill that void as well. How do you get funding? How do you... Um, you know, how do you make the right uh, hiring decisions? What are, how do I structure a team? That's a, that idea. So how do we take the, uh, the idea of business and take it over Bitcoin and equip founders with the, the right knowledge to really build out the right teams and companies? That's one thing I'm thinking about. Um, I guess outside of talent and hiring, that kind of stuff. Uh, sorry, what, what was the original question? Yeah, just, just I suppose, and you, you kind of answered the first bit, but... Um... Yeah, just like what problems? So, like, is there anything you're thinking every day? Like, you know, I'd really love if there was a product or there was a service, or if Bitcoin did this, or I could do this with my. Like, I know for me, one is um, is how would you say um, like just thinking about inheritance? I think is a massive problem in the oh, yeah. space that uh, I think gives literally like all Bitcoiners a headache when they start thinking about it. You just like. How do you do it properly? Um, yeah. That's one for me. Yeah. To, what, what do you think is, do you have any pet peeves yourself? <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, user interfaces. So a lot of the products and services, I, I will say they are getting a lot better, especially in the last couple of years. Um, but just using things that are, are creating apps, creating websites, whatever it may be that are super intuitive that any normie on the street can use and really understand Bitcoin. Um, thinking about the intention spans nowadays, nowadays, if I was onboarding a new Bitcoiner or sorry, not a Bitcoiner, just onboarding a, a normal person to start using Bitcoin for the first time, how do I make the wallet experience as intuitive and possible as possible? Plus the education that comes along with it. You know, they're not going to go and read a whole book on Bitcoin. How do I just do three bullet points and just make that, I don't know that process from zero, uh, just getting off zero and getting that initial education, that initial plant, that seed planted, how do we make that better? Because my experience um, onboarding new Bitcoiners is definitely a challenge. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on like a Bitcoin one pager, so hopefully I can crack that. Yeah, I've been thinking about this for a long time. And it's, I don't have the answer, but I know there's a lot of talented people in this space that can take it to the next level. What, what do you think has the best, um, just side note like but yeah. the best user experience like wallet interface or whatever user interface out of anything out there hmm. um, i would say probably a, a mobile hot wallet so using something like moon because you yeah. don't have to really think about bitcoin and lightning it's, it's kind of a lot more intuitive so being able to just send and receive uh on a on a hot wallet on your phone um without um 
without having any errors too. So I was using Blue Wallet for the last year or so. And then one out of 10 transactions would fail. And so when you're trying to onboard a new Bitcoin and you see a transaction doesn't go through, they're like, okay, what the heck? And I look like a dummy too. <laughs> so I'm sure that'll come with time, you know, as the Lightning Network gets over more capacity in it and improves. Yeah, the wallet of Satoshi, look, I, I know it's kind of custodial, but I think that's just so easy. <laughs> you know, yeah, I do too. <laughs> Admittedly, I have it. I, I have a, I have a, a wallet there and I've used it a few times, but I haven't used it a ton. So I do need to spend some more time using that. There's another exactly. company too. It's called, I think it's called Lightning 21. Um, and it's a way, they kind of gamified onboarding uh, people into Bitcoin. So they make, you could send someone a link uh, gift them some initial sats and then from there they can uh, download a wallet and go through the educational process. So I actually really like what they're doing. Okay. Intro, they must be copying their name, Verify 21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anything 21 Bitcoin companies are, you know, 21 million, um, something I know. bit. Yeah. Didn't get to trademark 21 in time, but, but um, right, I got he, one, one quick aside to that. Yeah. Not my original idea, but all the Bitcoiners need to get together and we need to buy Forever 21 and just sell yeah. all orange colored clothes. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's the nice <laughs> name. I think is what someone needs to buy the domain. Um, I tweeted about it the other day, but uh, I don't know how someone bought it because it's not for sale. Like I was trying mm. to buy it, but um, like WTF happened in 2009 and just start doing all like the opposite kind of Bitcoin, like your price, you know, deflation living in Bitcoin yeah. terms and all this because that's look, a solid idea. Yeah, if, if we're right, like it should, it, it should look pretty good in like ten or fifteen years. Um, if we're wrong, I don't know. It, we, we'll, it, <laughs> it's just a waste of domain. But um, yeah. So yeah. So just um, let me see then. Yeah, no, but just wallet Satoshi like that is. I kind of call that like the conference app. Whenever you're at a conference and someone doesn't have a Bitcoin wallet and they just you know they want to try out the drinks machine or something right. like just uh given that and then they just send it and then go over it and it's just like you know literally 90 seconds and they're they're up and running mm -hmm. but yeah but, it's uh, getting better like i said with time compared to even just a couple of years ago it's getting so much better so i just ho i hope that progress continues yeah no I know, I know we say that but then like recently i had to help someone out um he just asked me for help with uh like his kraken account and like uh -huh. I thought Kraken was supposed to be good. Like I don't use Kraken. I logged into this thing and I, I literally couldn't find like the withdrawal button. And mm -hmm. that's why he got me to help him because he couldn't find it either. So yeah, like if there's any, I don't know, Bitcoin user experience or UX designers out there, try get into Kraken and fix the thing because uh, it's um, it's pretty crazy inside it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so just just i suppose um just before we wrap up then uh it's kind of a question i asked everyone on the podcast but like what threats do you think bitcoin could face like is there anything that could you know stop this this bitcoin revolution that you're worried about happening anything at all that you think could um stop bitcoin yeah i don't <sighs> hmm i think the biggest threat right now is maybe like SHA-256 being cracked. And with the advancements of AI, you know, getting better and better every year, I could see a future in which in the next 100 years or so that gets cracked. And I don't know, that would that would just break Bitcoin, basically. Um, so yeah, thinking about AI, quantum computers, that type of idea, but that's kind of far out. And that's more of a black swan type event. Nothing immediate that I can really point out. I, I think the game theory speaks to government's banning it. I don't think that's going to work at all. Even if the US government today just decided, oh, we're banning Bitcoin. Um, there's no, there's really no way to kill it. Even if there's a, uh, a solar flare too, that takes out a lot of our internet communications, a lot of our satellites, Bitcoin still lives on. It might, I guess, uh, detract our progress and take a little time to restart. But as long as there's one Bitcoin or that has a node, um, you can't kill it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've often thought about like the, you know, quantum compute and stuff. To be honest, like, I don't really think it's, it's definitely not an issue for the, it's, it's a long-term problem, but like. I yeah, we're talking of, decades, like hundred years out. My yeah, I, 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 I definitely, yeah. I'd, I'd love to, yeah, I don't think 
there's like quantum experts that like exist to do podcasts or whatever but yeah there was one I'd, I'd love to <laughs> i'd love to interview like i i was listening i think pomp did interview someone or maybe it wasn't pomp maybe someone like him i think it might be like what bitcoin did or something had mm-hmm. a couple of guys on and yeah conclusion not an issue for the moment but long term like who knows so we just need to because i think the problem is like you know the bitcoin algorithm once and this could be a problem in itself but like once enough people agree to upgrade the protocol um the encryption encryption mechanism can be you know upgraded or changed like i'm definitely not an expert in any of that stuff but the problem yeah. would be that anyone that doesn't upgrade like satoshi's coins they can just get unlocked um so anyway i'm just saying that I'd, I'd love to do a I, podcast of this. I think the idea of Bitcoin can never be killed. The cat's out of the bag. Separating money from states, the whole thesis, really. Uh, and even if Bitcoin were to die by a black swan event, I don't think you can kill that idea now. There's, It's so obvious now how broken the fiat system is, and we need to fix that. Whether it's Bitcoin or something else, I'm hoping it's Bitcoin. But that idea is not going away. Yeah, 100%. So... Yeah. Um, so Eric, look, this has been uh, great. So thanks for joining us on your birthday. <laughs> first. Yeah. Time. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And, um, yeah. So where can people uh, find you and Bitcoin talent company if they want to learn more? Sure. Yeah. My, my personal Twitter is at epod rules, uh, E P O D R U L Z. Um, don't hold that against me. I think I made it in like middle school. <laughs> uh, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Just search my name, Eric Podwatchki. I uh, would love to connect with all the plebs out there. And then Bitcoin Talent Co. is exactly that. Bitcoin Talent.co. It's not .com.co. Um, so you find our website there and you follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn as well. So at Bitcoin Talent Co. Awesome. This has been great. Um, thanks, Eric. Thank you so much, Jack. Brilliant.